How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming and in this RPG Maker MV video this is going to be the class spotlight on the monk from Final Fantasy XI. So the monk's abilities are pretty straightforward. It's about dealing a lot of damage, wearing light armor, being sort of agile, and uh, getting a lot of turns in combat uh, if you're using ATB or CTBs due to their higher agility and dealing a, a decent amount of damage because they get an extra attack. So let's take a look at the basic attack, the knuckle attack. Just gonna hit twice, a chance to stun for one round. Um, and let's look at some of the abilities. So the long, long ability, uh, like uh, all the classes that I'm using, the abilities that are not spells will be instants, uh, but they all are based on cooldown so that they can't be overused and abused. So the 30 cooldown, the longest ability, is going to add three extra swings for five turns and a 30% extra strength which is attack power so using hundred fist is a really awesome ability I'm also putting a state animation on it but that's optional so the monk gets an additional one attack just from being able to hit twice with their knuckles so when you combine that with hundred fist you're gonna get one two three four hits with each attack so we can really unleash a lot of damage right there so we get one, two, and then plus three. I can count. You, you get five. Five, ex, or five swings total. So let's take a look at some of the other abilities that the monk gets. So we get boost, which is going to increase your uh, attack power by 15% for two, two turns. And this will stack with the bonus you get from 100 fists. So you're getting those five attacks uh, with that total bonus of uh, plus 30, plus uh, 15, so plus 45% attack power. And the next ability is Dodge, which is going to increase your uh, evasion by 50%. So you get that uh, kind of quick movement, you know, the accents the agility of the monk uh, to reduce uh, being hit by 50% for three rounds. This is only going to affect melee attacks. Spells will still have, you know, it's not magic evasion for Dodge. Focus is going to increase your accuracy by 50% for three rounds. Really good ability to have, especially if you're fighting something that's going to blind you. So even when the monk gets blinded, he's going to be able to land a lot of hits still uh, due to his focus ability, which lasts for three rounds. Um, the next ability is a cool ability called Chakra. It's basically like uh, in Final Fantasy XIV, you have uh, the monk gets an ability uh, this thing is called Second Wind, and it's just going to restore a little bit of HP based off your current HP. So that restored like almost 3,000, but keep in mind this is at level 99. We're fighting level 35 stuff here. Uh, so the monk gets the most HP out of all of the, the classes uh, so far that I've made for Final Fantasy XI in this game, Dungeons of Driftwood. So the fact that he has almost 19,000 so if you take that in consideration, it's really not a lot of HP that this ability restores, cause it, but it's based on a percentage, so even a small percentage of that 19,000 is going to seem like a lot of, of extra uh, uh, HP. So the next ability is Chi Blast. This is going to be an instant damage attack. Really, really great ability for the monk to have. It does take a little bit of TP, but not enough to really make it... Uh, I might even, you could even get rid of the TP cost on this, but I thought since it's actually going to deal damage uh, without taking up the turn, it, it probably should have some extra cost besides just a cooldown. So the, the TP requirement on that is very small, and it's up to you if you want to include that or not. I'll probably leave it there just because it's a, it's a powerful ability. Uh, it does have a 10 uh, turn cooldown, so it can't be overused. The next ability is Counter Stance, and it's going to basically sacrifice your defense to increase your chance of counterattacking. So you're going to lose 25% of your defense, but you're going to have a 50% chance to counterattack when that's on. But it's, it's also an instant ability, so that's going to not consume your turn, as none of these are. The next is an awesome ability to have, and this is going to be an ability that's been modified quite a bit for MV. This is going to be like a, a party buff. This is going to increase the maximum HP of all party members. So this is a really, really good one to have if you're fighting a boss that's got like an ultimate attack that does more damage than your party can even have max HP. Using this ability will give all of your party members that extra boost so then you can have the white mage cure everybody up to full and uh, then you'll be able to withstand that super powerful attack that you normally wouldn't be able to. The next ability is awesome if you're fighting something that is kind of like 
immune to physical damage or strong against regular physical damage. It's formless strikes. So when you have this uh, state on, when you use this ability, it gives you a state of formless strikes. So now your attacks are going to deal non-elemental damage. And in this game, uh, nobody's strong against non-elemental damage and nobody's weak against it. It's just like a solid state damage that's going to do uh, the same amount without any fluctuations. So this will make it so that if you're fighting something like, you know, a, a wraith or something and they don't take any physical damage, now your attacks, which would normally be physical, are actually non-elemental and will become useful. So the next one is perfect counter, and this is doesn't last as long as the other one that gives you um, counter attack, but uh, you know counter stance. Which see counter stance is going to be, I uh, believe it's five turns, and then perfect counter is going to be three turns. But uh, perfect counter doesn't reduce your defense, and it lasts, and it gives you a hundred percent chance to counter attack. So perfect counter is a great ability, uh, especially if you're like the last party member because you're the only target. So it won't counterattack uh, magic spells, uh, but it will counterattack any physical attacks that are being directed. Impetus is an ability that increases your attack power and your critical hit rate. So it's a small boost to attack power, which stacks with boost and it stacks with 100 fists. So you can even even go to the next thing. So you got 30% plus 15% plus another 15%. So you can give yourself a total of 60% extra attack bonus and another 15% critical chance uh, with using this ability. So we've got all of our states on us right now. Uh, all of our abilities are on cooldown. So when we were, if we were to attack now, we're just going to totally destroy everything. We're going to be like, it's, we see how it missed us. Uh, uh, that was a counter attack. So the monk becomes super powerful um, once you've got your abilities uh, for the monk. So the monk, super really good uh, class to have in, in any RPG, I feel like. And you can change this up. Like I said, this is going to be a template for you to modify as all my states will be uh, in this, in these sort of tutorial series. So let's jump into the game, uh, or let's jump into the engine and take a look at, um, take, a look, take a look at how I made these uh, abilities and states. Really, really easy to do all these. They're pretty simple and straightforward, but I think they come to a really good balance once you've got them all down. So... First thing you're going to do is you're going to create the class of monk and you're going to add a new type of skill. You're going to call it monk ability or focus or key or, you know, chi, whatever you whatever you want to name it. It's just you're going to need a a, a skill type for it. Now, you could put this in your special or your magic if you want to, but if you're using Yanfly's job uh, class change core or especially if you're using the sub job plugin, I recommend putting all of the monk's abilities in its own sort of uh, class, you know, its own skill type. So we've got the monk created. We've got a new skill type for all of them. Um, for I didn't do this in the first video where I showed you the warrior, um, but you could see it if you look at the video, is show you what level you get all of the abilities at. You could pause the video, but I didn't point it out, so someone might be like, oh, well, we got the abilities, what level do I get them? So I'm going to go over that real quick. 100 Fist is your level 1 ability. Level 5, you're going to get boost. Level 15, you get dodge. 25, you're going to get focus. 35, you're going to get chakra. 40, uh, 41 is key blast. 45 is counter stance, 60 is mantra, 75 for formless strike, 79 for perfect counter, and 88 for impetus. Now you could switch these up completely around. Say your max level in your game is 50, just divide these numbers by two. And you know, this is just the template. I, I wanted to point that out. What I didn't point out in the last video, although you could have paused the video and seen that for the warrior. So I'm using the same plugin that I did for the warrior. I'm using Ganfly's. Um, the base parameter control and the X class base parameters. Go to the help file and copy the template there. Um, the stats that I'm using here for max HP is level times 190 plus 100. Uh, max MP is level times zero because get no uh, we get no uh, MP right. Um, they don't have any skills that cost MP. It's just TP and timer based. Uh, attack is level times seven, and, and I balanced all the classes out so that they're all of their basic parameters will equal up to 30. So every class has the same total number of stats. They've just been moved around for each class. That's a good way to go about balancing it. You could take away a couple stats here and add more HP, a couple stats there, add more MP if you want to, but I put all of their base stats to total up to 30. So we've got attack at seven, defense at five, uh, magic attack level times three, they're all level times, magic defense level times four, agility level times six, 
luck level times five. Uh, then we've got a note tag in here that's going to remove the MP bar from the, the thing. You don't have to do this, but it's very simple. You just do swap gauge two, which, which would be our MP, a colon, and then you type in null to remove it. So that's uh, These skills right here are for a learning skill system that adds to your parameters, which is something totally different. So we'll skip past that. Now, I've got a ton of types of my equipment types. You don't really need this many. You probably shouldn't have this many. But um, I do, and I'm not going to take them out because I've already got a good use for all of them. But uh, you don't really need that many. But if you wanted to copy how I do, uh, I'm using Yanfly's uh, plugins to uh, specify Equip Core, using the Equip Core to specify what can be equipped. So you can specify in what order they're in, and like you could have like ten earrings, you could have like five weapons if you want, you know. Um, so I just have one set of weapon, even though they use knuckles. I'm making all of the weapons that are knuckles, basically just a set of like a pair of knuckles. So you don't have like this is my right knuckle, this is my left knuckle. No, it's just like these are these types of knuckles, plural, and so forth and so on. So one weapon slot. We're doing a uh, limit burst is. Uh, that's for you know equipping a special limit burst for an action sequence. Yeah, we got head, earring, neck, back, shoulders, chest, waist, hands, ring, legs, feet, and a relic slot, and that's it. And if you want to use like a, uh, if you're using the class change core and you're looking at it at a menu, you can use a, an icon to specify what icon that is. So I'm using icon 77, but my icon sheet's probably different from yours, so that's something you could possibly ignore. Now I'm giving all of my classes preserve TP throughout the uh, different battle to the next battle. They're going to preserve TP. Um, I figure that's just the best way I could go about it uh, unless I want to use enhanced TP which I might do later on and there's a there's a parameter in Yanfly's enhanced TP that lets you just check it and uh, if, if that's set to true then everybody has preserve TP without having to give the special flag of preserve TP. Um, so you could either do that with uh, enhanced core with setting the primer to true or you can just add it right here as a special flag. Target rates normal hit rates been up to 1% to a total of 96%. Evasion rate has been up uh, 3% to a total of 8% evasion rate since uh, monk would be more agile and would possibly evade more attacks. Critical rate is up to from 4 to 5%, so it's up 1% from normal, as I've done with most classes, except for like Thief and Ranger, who have like more uh, critical hit than, than a 1 out of 20 on a D20. Or rolling the 20 on a D20, which would be 5%. They can use two types of weapons, knuckles and stabs. They don't get a lot of different armor choices, being that they're kind of like bruisers. They do a lot of physical damage, get lots of swings. They're harder to hit. They do more crit. They, you know. So I'm I'm limiting them on how much they're not super tanky. Now they have a lot of HP, but they're not going to be able to uh, have a lot of damage reduction and wear the best types of armors. They can wear general armors and light armors. They can't wear mage armors that will give like certain stats to magic and stuff and possibly other states. Uh, and they're not able to use heavy armor like shoulder pads that would uh, do an absorption barrier. Uh, another plugin I'm using from Yanfly, the absorption barrier one, shoulder pads will add that. Um, so giving them the skill type of limit burst, that's for when they get 100 TP. And we're going to award that new skill type that we created, the monk ability or chi or focus or whatever you named it in your game. So I'm giving uh, the monk a special attack state. Now, most of my classes are not going to get a special attack state, um, but monk and possibly others by the time I'm done will have an attack state. So I'm giving an attack state of stun, which is going to stun them for one to two rounds. I think I've even reduced it to one. We'll, we could take a look at that. Um, stun is... Yeah, from one to two rounds, it uh, removes at the end of the battle, uh, and it's got a little state animation. It just basically st uh, stops them so they can't move. Basically what you would expect stun to do. Uh, and when they attack, we're giving them uh, that 5% chance for it. So um, back to the classes. Uh, so they've got that attack state stun plus 5%, which means when it's basically like rolling a 20 on a D20, just like getting a critical, you have the same amount to critical as you do getting a stun, except you'd probably have more chance to critical because other factors play into landing a critical. But say you roll a D20 every time you hit, and if that is a lands on a 20, you know, 5% of the time, you're going to uh, do your damage and also stun them. So we're um, complementing the monk's damage by adding a special, uh, adding an extra attack times. So that's another trait we're putting in there for the attack. We're doing attack times, adding one there. 
and we've added the state right there to uh, attack state for stun uh, five percent so they hit twice boom boom without any other effects uh, they're gonna hit twice every turn and they have a five percent chance to stun so ultimately every time they attack they're gonna have a ten percent chance to stun not exactly ten percent but they're gonna get two chances five percent each chance to stun when you attack so that's a pretty good uh, type of a good offense is is the best defense type of uh, form so the monk super really cool um, that's pretty much it for this uh, classes thing let's take a look at the skills that the monk gets so starting off at, uh, with hundred fists the most powerful ability that the monk gets and most of these are simple skills to create which makes the a monk easy to build and put into your game so we're gonna say quickens attack speed adds three swings for five turns uh, attack power plus 30 percent and then cool down you know CD 30 if you want to put that in the description it's usually a good idea to let the player know cooldowns are so we're gonna put this skill inside the new type we created the monk ability no MP cost no TP cost because we're putting it on a timer and also we're not actually adding any gain TP gain unless you want to everything is a template change it up however you want it to be the scope of the user you don't want to allow the monk to use 100 fist on another person it really wouldn't make sense to do that so you're gonna scope this to the user instead of one ally all of these moves are going to be battle screen only this is going to be a certain hit and I've created a custom animation for it and you can do that too um, so what we're going to do is put the note tags cooldown 30 and instant really really simple note tags um, using Yanfly's, uh, uh, Yanfly's plugins uh, we're adding a state of 100 fists so let's look at that state 100 fists very very simple priority 99 uh, it doesn't remove at the end of the battle. We're going to set to turn in duration 5 to 5. Uh, you can add a state animation with state animation colon and then the number if you want to. Attack speed, 1000. This is not really uh, doing very much. Uh, depending on the battle system you're using, you can remove this if you want. This is just basically going to make all of the monks attacks happen before the rest of everybody else in the round. So that they, you know, they're hitting so fast that they're probably going to get the first attack off. So uh, attack speed optional. Uh, the main thing it's doing is attack times plus three, which is adding three additional swings to their to, the, to their two base attacks already. Um, parameter attack times 130 percent, which is going to give a 30 percent bonus to the current uh, attack power. Let's go back to skills. The next ability of boost. This is going to enhance your strength or attack power for your game probably by 15 percent for two turns. Cooldown 5, so we got CD5 on there. Put that in the monk's ability. The scope, the user, most of these are set to the user because the monk uses abilities that affect themselves. Uh, like they boost themselves up pretty much. They have a couple of uh, party effects. We'll get to that. Occasion, battle screen. Uh, hit type is going to be certain hit. Custom animation is up to you. Um, we're going to add the state of boost. Cooldown of 5, it's an instant cast. So let's take a look at that state. Boost is very simple. You just do parameter change, attack times 115%. Priority 50, uh, it's not removed at the end of the battle, no restrictions. Turn in 2-2. Two to two. And You can change it up however you want. So let's take a look at the, the next ability, Dodge. We're going to enhance evasion by 50% for 3 rounds with a cooldown of 10. Set it to the Monk ability, scope the user, battle screen, certain hit, custom animation, cooldown of 10, instant ability. Uh, add state dodge. We'll take a look at the state of dodge. So dodge is 50 priority. You can change that up or down. Uh, turn in three to three rounds. Uh, extra. We're, do, we're gonna do the ex parameter right here, and we're gonna set that evasion rate plus 50 percent. So this is going to happen before. Um, so after the attack is made, if accuracy has been passed, then evasion rate comes in. If you're using uh, uh, some Yanfly plugins that also changes how evasion rate works and it kind of weighs evasion versus accuracy. So you may want to manipulate this number up and down depending on the plugins you're using. Go to the next skill, Focus. So enhances accuracy by 50% for 3 rounds, cooldown of 10. Give, put it in the Monk ability, scope of the user, battle screen, certain hit, give it a custom animation. Cooldown of 10, it's an instant ability as most of these are. Uh, we're going to add a state of focus. We'll take a look at the state of focus. So focus 50 priority. Uh, it's not removed at the end of the battle. We're going to set it to turn in 3 to 3. We're going to edit uh, extra parameter hit rate plus 50%. So this is accuracy, right? So this is kind of the opposite of dodge. Uh, and like I said, you can manipulate this number depending on the plugins you're using. The next ability is Chakra. We have a formula here. This is going to be the one that restores HP. Cooldown of 10, Monk Ability Scope, the user, Occasion Battle Screen. You might want to put this, uh, 
you could you could put this menu uh i mean you could put this uh both or like both screens so you set it to always uh, if you want to i've set it to battle screen so you can't use it out of battle but it's up to you if you want to set it up uh, the other way uh, type certain hit animation is custom we're going to do something different with this ability we're going to instead of using the effects we're going to use a formula we're going to go damage type hp recover and the element of healing for me but you could have it on light magic or whatever you want to do i recommend creating a different element for all of your healing abilities if you've seen my uh my other video the repair kit you can see how that could come into play um, also, if you have like light abilities like Dia or like Holy Damage, and and you get some armor like the Radiant Breastplate that uh, Breastplate that kind of like reduces all Holy Damage, it'll also reduce healing if you put your healing to Holy Damage. So you, so you got to keep that in mind too. The formula for Chakra is 100 plus the user's level, so A dot level times 12 plus A dot Magic Defense, so A dot MDF times 4. So it's a a pretty decent amount right there, uh, and it's 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 like it's not set to a percentage but it's set mainly off the level so the higher your level the more you're going to get uh, and also your magic defense will come into play as a monk so that's a good way if uh, you can build your character differently depending on uh, what stats you want to put into play uh, cooldown of 10 and it's set to instant we don't need a state for this because we're using the damage formula let's move on to a, one of my favorite ones the chi blast so the chi blast releases chi to attack an enemy. I think some people call it key or chi. It's, I don't really know exactly what's right. I think key is right. Let me know in the comments how I'm s spelling and saying it wrong. Uh, cooldown of 10, set it to monk abilities. This is going to be a scope of one enemy. Uh, and if you want to make this instant or not, it's up to you. Uh, I set it to instant and I've made it cost TP. You could also set this to TP cost zero and take off the instant or do both. Uh, it's up to you how you want to handle that. Um, scope of the uh, scope one enemy occasion battle screen of course this is going to actually be a magical attack instead of a certain hit um, because we're using a formula and we're basically going to use divine element or like your light element but you can put this in whatever element you want I wouldn't recommend being it like a physical element though it wouldn't make much sense give it a custom animation most likely so there's the formula here HP damage I'm using divine which is like my holy or light element the formula I'm using is a dot ATK times two plus a dot MAT times two plus a dot MDF times two. So attack, magic power, and your deep magic defense come into play. So it's pretty decent, uh, decently strong. On average, the regular attack will be like three or four times one of your parameters. So this is actually a total of six times certain parameters. So pretty decently strong. Variance and criticals up to you. I'm allowing it to have the standard 20% variance and a critical hit. So I think that sort of fits to a, a pretty cool ability to have. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Counter Stance is the next ability. Really awesome. It kind of has a cost, though. If you're if you're fighting something that hits super hard, you may not want to use it all the time. Or if, say, you have a full party of six and you're fighting one thing, you might not want, really want to use it because the chances of you getting hit are kind of slim, depending on how many. But say the monk is the last one alive, definitely want to use Counter Stance because... You're going to basically counterattack 50% of the time. Greatly weakens defense, but increases your chances of counterattacking. Um, so it reduces your defense by 25%. That's a little harsh. You can even reduce this to 20% or 15%. It's up to you, but I'm going to leave it because the monk has a lot of abilities. A lot of really powerful abilities. So I'm going to leave it like this. Counterattack plus 50% with a cooldown of 10. Now, you can look at this ability and you can look at perfect counter and think, wow, perfect counter is just way better. That's true. But the thing about this is you're going to get counter stance at a much lower level than perfect counter. So that's the, the payoff there. So you're going to get a similar ability, but a better version of it at a higher level. So cooldown of 10, monk ability, set it to the user, battle screen only. It's going to be a certain hit with the custom animation. Uh, no damage formula. We're going to add a state for this one. Uh, counter stance is the state. So 10 cooldown and instant ability. Let's look at the state of counter stance. Counter Stance has two different traits that are coming into play. It's going to be turn in five to five turns. Parameter defense times 70%. Remember, when you multiply something that's below 100%, it's counting as a debuff. So defense times 75% is cutting your defense down by around 25%. So we're going to add another one, extra parameter, counterattack plus 50%, which is going to make you get an extra swing on. If you get hit, you're going to counterattack half of the time that you get hit. Move on to the next ability, Mantra. 
Really super cool ability. This is going to actually be targeting the scope of all allies. Set it to monk ability. Increases the max HP of all party members. Now you can make a state for this and customize it uh, however you want. I've done the simple thing in the effects and just going add buff. Um, these seem to not get used too often in my game, so I've said, like, let's just do something with the add buff. I like to make a lot of states, but, uh, you know, the more states you add, the more lag you're going to get. So, any chance, like, you can get to use, like, the pre-built buffs without adding other states. Now, I know this is technically adding a state, but it's not uh, another state that's being, that has code to run, really. So, we're going to add a buff max HP for however many turns you want. I've set it to five turns. Uh, cooldown of 10, it's an instant ability, certain hit, custom animation, battle screen only. Remember, we're setting this to all allies, so we don't actually have to create a custom state if we're going to do something simple as that. Like I said, if you want to create a custom state, you can, to, to say you want it to be a huge buff, 50%, or double your max HP, like a giant drink or something. You could do that, or something small, like only 10%, but it lasts 10 rounds. You can change that up however you want. The next ability is good utility skill to have if you're fighting something that's super resistant against physical damage. So this is just basically going to add a state. Um, this is formless strikes. When it's in effect, melee attacks are going to deal non-elemental damage. You can do slash I with a number to show an icon in here if you want to. Uh, cooldown of 10, monk ability. It's going to be scoped to the user, occasion battle screen, certain hit. We're going to use a custom animation. We're going to add the state formless strikes. It's going to be cooldown of 10 and an instant ability. Let's look at that state. Formless Strikes is going to just basically do a very simple attack element. You're going to add whatever attack element you want. So non-elemental. If you don't have non-elemental in your game, you can have this Formless Strikes deal fire damage or lightning damage or holy damage or dark damage. Whatever you really want it to do. But it's just a, a state that uh, the monk can do so that their attacks do a different kind of damage, right? I recommend getting Yanfly's element core, and uh, you can even have this do multiple elements and, and play and change how they affect, but it's going to be turn in 5 to 5, no restrictions or anything. Looking at the next skill, Perfect Counter, one of my favorite abilities. I know I've said that, I think, twice now. It's going to, but it's, it's, it's super sweet. It just basically makes every physical attack that is put against you, you're going to counterattack. 100% chance to counterattack. The downside, it's only going to last for three rounds. So you want to use this when somebody gets knocked down and out of the party so that you, there's more of a chance that the monk gets targeted. So, um, Or you could even put some sort of taunting uh, ability on him so that the monk has to get targeted. And then, you know, to you, like I said, this is the template. Yours could be a lot different than my monk. So 100% chance to, count, uh, to counter attack for three rounds, cooldown of 10, monk ability, scoping the user as most of these are, uh, occasion battle screen, certain hit, custom animation, cooldown of 10, instant ability. We're going to add a state, a perfect counter, so let's look at the state, a perfect counter. Um, this sets to the extra parameter um, to, of counter attack right here, plus 100%. So you're going to uh, counter no matter what, unless you die, right? Impetus is the next ability. Uh, I think this is the level 88 monk ability. It's going to increase your attack power and your critical hit rate. So this is like at the, the icing on the cake of the monk uh, so that you can do a, that little boost of damage and a chance to get a critical hit. So critical hits are, can be multiplied by double or triple depending on how you, or even it, by any number. You can have critical hits do 10 times the amount of damage using Yanfly's critical core. Um, so you can change that up. You can even add critical core commands right here if you want. Uh, we're going to set this to um, Monk Ability, Scoping the User, Battle Screen, Certain Hit, uh, Custom Animation, uh, and we're going to add the state of Impetus by 100%. All of these are adding the state 100% chance. I don't think I've said that. Um, so what we're going to do is set the parameter of attack times 115% so that all that's really doing is adding 15% bonus uh, since it's a multiplication. Now the next one's not a multiplication, it's a, it's a plus number, so this doesn't have to be 115%. We're going to do X parameter X X parameter uh, critical rate plus 15% so that's going to give you 15% extra chance to, to land that critical and that's going to stack right with your already uh, 5% or whatever it is so you, you basically have one in five chance to critical when you have this on <clears throat> really really good setup totally what I have another state here divine heal Okay, this is for another ability that um, the monk has I don't really have it listed but this is a uh, going to increase the recovery effect. So just an idea for another skill. Uh, Divine Seal, 
you can have it, uh, if you want to add it, turn in three turns. It adds a special parameter of recovery effect times 200%. So that means it's going to double any type of recovering magic that gets healed on it. So you can use a skill, a divine heal, and then you could use chakra, which will double the ability of chakra. Or if the white mage casts a cure on the monk, it's going to double the cure. So you could, you know, create another ability if you want to add right there. But yeah, that's really it for the monk. Um, there's no items that go with it. Uh, like I said, the abilities uh, pretty much sum up what the monk is. They've got lots of utility abilities. They can only use light armor, so they can't use like the heavy armor that does mostly defense. So you have to kind of make this so since they have so much HP and so much attack power, you can't let them wear the best gear. That would be my uh, piece of advice. But yeah, do you guys like these videos? you like these? Let's make a... Uh, you know, let's these class spotlights and everything. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new here. If you have any special requests, put them in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can follow me on Twitter and DM me other special requests. I usually respond to those quicker than the comments. So you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Driftwood Gaming. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.